Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents and I'm gonna try and bring you a very quick, a very crude video on how to safely and effectively overclock your AMD or Nvidia graphics cards. So don't go away. Okay guys, I'm gonna try and bring you as much information as I possibly can in a video that's long enough to keep your attention because I know there's all those other videos over in the sidebar just begging, watch me, watch me, watch me, and you know you wanna click it, but you also wanna know how to overclock your graphics card, so I'm gonna bring that information to you as quickly as possible. Now what you're looking at here is my channel, so if you accidentally come across this video or stumbled across me for the first time, check out some of the other videos I have here. As you can see, I've got a lot of PC-related stuff. I've got vlogs, I've got some Tech Talk, which is a podcast that I do. I've got all kinds of stuff in there that meets pretty much everybody's fancy and likes to tickle it and, and all that dirty stuff that probably is a little bit over the top. But this program is what we're gonna take a look at today, and this is MSI Afterburner. And to get started, I'll put the link down in the description, make sure you check it out. Download this program, it's absolutely free, and it works with any graphics card you have, whether it be AMD or Nvidia, all the way back to the 200 series Nvidia's, I believe, and the 4000 series AMD's. Now to get started here, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of give you a quick rundown of the basic functions of this utility. There's just way too much to cover in, in the one video. So we're gonna show you the important stuff. Now, it shows me that I'm using a GTX 680 because that's what I'm using, and it shows me the driver version that I'm using. Make sure you're using the most up-to-date driver for your graphics card. It is very important to do that because the manufacturers do take overclocking into account and the drivers make a huge difference when it comes to overclocking and stability. Now core voltage here is measured in millivolts. What that means, if I add 100 millivolts, I'm adding 0.1 volt because that's how that works. That's math people. That's math. Milla thousand volt. 100 of a thousand or 0.1. There you go. Math lesson. We're done for today. All right. Core voltage, 100 millivolts. You can slide that all the way to the right on just about any card. Most cards aren't going to allow you to overvolt and do damage because they're limited by their BIOS. You can't hurt them. Power limit is what you see in my case because I'm using a 680, which is a GPU boost 1.0 feature for Nvidia. It says my card wants to run at 132% of its max power target. It's just the way NVIDIA calls overclocking. Just slide it all the way to the right, you're not gonna hurt anything. Now core megahertz is just like core voltage, where you're gonna be adding megahertz to the boost clock of your graphics card, whether it be AMD or NVIDIA. So if I have a 165 megahertz overclock, it's whatever my boost voltage is, plus 165. You have to do the math because it's different for every card. If you have a graphics card that has a 180 megahertz boost clock and you add 165 to that, your overclock is gonna be effectively 1245 megahertz or 1.25 gigs, depending on which number you like to look at. I like the bigger number, so we'll go with 1245. Now memory clock is one of those things that a lot of people get very confused about. What you have to think about is the fact that you are dealing with double density RAM. You're dealing with VDDR5 with just about any graphics card made today. And what that means is DD is double density. So if I add 300 megahertz to my memory clock, I'm really adding 600 megahertz because the double density is the RAM multiplier of two. So if I have, in my case, a GTX 680, which has advertised 6,000 megahertz RAM, if I add 300 to this, I'm really adding 600 megahertz to my 6,000 for a total overclock of 6,600. Now on the surface, when you listen to that for the first time, if you're a noob and you have no idea what any of this means, you probably went, what the fuck is he talking about? He's throwing numbers at me. I don't want numbers. I just want a game and overclock and blah, blah, blah. What you can do to be safe, guys, is just leave this number at zero. And the reason why I'm telling you to do that is there's a video I'm gonna be doing in the future called, how does memory clock speed really affect your gaming performance on your graphics card? We're gonna talk about and debunk the importance of having super, super fast RAM and what it really means to your overall gaming performance in frames per second on different types of games. A little teaser for a future video. For now, you can leave it at zero if you understand how the memory clock works. Just go ahead and start playing with that number. You can't really hurt anything. The worst case scenario, if you overclock any of these functions too far, blue screen of death, 
or a system lockup, or in Nvidia's case, usually just a driver crash, and then you restart. Can't really hurt anything. Most graphics cards today are very foolproof. If you're using an old card, an old card, you may end up. Uh, I don't even want to say you may end up damaging something, but because of you know liabilities and stuff, this is definitely due at your own risk. Now down here on the bottom, you can see we have different profiles, apply, reset, settings, and save. If you want to set this overclock, hit apply. There, your graphics card is now expecting to see this setup. But you notice over here on the monitoring right here, the core clock, which is where my cursor is, we're still running at 1006, which is my base clock, not my boost clock, my base clock. Well, why didn't it go up? Well, because if you go into settings here, I have, if you go over to the right on the top bar, you'll find profiles. You can set up profiles. And what that shows here is 2D and 3D. So if I have a 2D program running like a video or a 2D game, you know, flat side scroller type game, you can tell it use whatever profile I've saved to profile number one. If I want to set a 3D profile, you can see I have these different profiles that have saved. And by doing that, if I just set something, hit save, these start to glow and I can say, okay, save it to number two. There, you'll see number three, number two, number one. See how these sliders move? Select it, hit apply, and there you go. So if you go back in here to your profiles, I can say in 3D profile or a 3D game like Battlefield 3 or any other new game, uh, it doesn't have to be new, just any game that uses any sort of 3D rendering, I can say load profile number two when you realize the card has gone into a 3D mode. And it will automatically apply the overclock. And when you turn off a 3D game or you quit gaming, it'll automatically turn off the overclock. And down here you can see apply overclocking at system startup. Just leave that on, you'll never have to think about it ever again. It's just that easy. Now, what I like to use when it comes to testing stability, even though this comes with a built-in program called Combustor, if you click this K, it'll bring up that program. I don't like this program. It doesn't truly stress your graphics card nearly enough. I like to use Valley Benchmark. And if you open up Valley Benchmark and you hit run, this is, all, this is also a free program. You've seen it in some of my other videos. The link is in the description. Let this run for a solid hour. If you can get this program to run for a solid hour and you don't get any crashes, then it's safe to say that your overclock is stable. Now you may find that some games crash even though you have a solid overclock running in Valley Benchmark. And the reason for that is because, uh, well, you know, every game tends to use the graphics card in a different way. Some people will put more emphasis on shaders. Some people will put a lot more emphasis on uh, you know, different uh, mod textures, modeling, and, and there's different functionality that happens inside a graphics card, and every game utilizes it in a different way. So you may find some games are not quite as stable, so if that happens, back off your overclock just a couple of points on the megahertz and see what happens. Now, what I want to do now is show you guys what happens and how much performance actually increases when it comes to your overclock. So I'm going to turn off the overclocks here and nothing is going to happen when I run a 3D game. We're going to start up 3D Mark 11 and then we are going to take a look at the score and we'll compare before and after on the overclocks on the 3D Mark score and the video, specifically the video score, and we'll see how much extra performance that we actually pulled out of this simply by moving a few sliders on the uh, MSI Afterburner. So through the magic of editing, we will be right back. Okay, so here we go, guys. Here's my first run right here with my one GTX 680 and my i7-3770. Even at stock speeds, I'm getting 92% better results than everyone else. It's kind of weird, considering uh, I guess this whole big chunk of the graph right here really makes up half of the people. Well, that doesn't statistically add up. Whatever, what we want to take a look at here actually is the graphics score. Physics score is going to definitely change based on the 
processor that you're using, your, your speed and all that. But the graphics score is completely independent of that. And I've got a 9909. And if you take a look at right here, you can see my overclock never kicked in. This is my boost clock of 1124. So let's go ahead and set my overclock right here. And now let's go ahead and see how this score changes. And through the magic of editing, we will be right back. There you go guys, now we have an 11,033p score and our graphics score jumped all the way up to 11,273 and I jumped up 2% on the better than results, up to the nine, better than 94% of all other results were using this hardware. So there you go guys, you don't have to be Walter White and make meth or sling crack cocaine or whore yourself out on the corner just to afford the biggest and baddest graphics card on the market when you can just get one that fits your budget, overclock it a little bit, and pull out more performance for every dollar that you've spent on this graphics card. So go out, download these programs, they're down in the description, overclock these things, let me know how bad you did or how good you did, and by bad I mean how badass you did overclocking your graphics card. Let me know on Twitter and Facebook, all that stuff's down in the description. I'd love to hear how much you were able to overclock your graphics cards and how much better your frames per second are. So happy tweaking, have fun, and, and by tweaking, I, I definitely mean computer tweaking. I'm a, you know, some of you guys may do a little bit of that stuff and my computer just farted, my laptop farted to tell me the battery's dying. Okay. Guys, I'll see you later. Check out my other videos. Remember, in the future, we're gonna talk about graphics card RAM speed and how much that really matters. Take care.